Hey everybody, welcome back to season two of our martial arts rapid review. Sorry it's been a while, but um, you know, it, it, it's been a while, I apologize. So anyway, let's get right into it. I thought we'd go off with a classic here. And this is Rush Hour. Now, I will be doing the Rush Hour trilogy, so bear with me. But let's talk about the first film. So, Rush Hour is a 1998 action comedy, um, kind of a martial arts film. But really, the martial arts actually kind of is secondary. And I'll get to why that is. Um, but anyway, it's directed by Brett Ratner. And it stars Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker. Now, I thought this movie actually came out a little bit earlier in the 90s. But actually, it's pretty close to 2000. But... Here's the thing. I'm going to be a little bit harsh on this film, and I'll tell you why a little bit later. Uh, let's just go over the plot. So, and something I may do for this season of uh, Martial Arts Rapid Review 2 is keeping track of how many martial art fights or how many fights actually take place in the movie. And I think this is actually important, and I'll get to that in a little bit as well. Anyway, so, so I get distracted. Uh, the plot. So, basically, it stars Jackie Chan as a detective from China or Hong Kong, and he gets asked to come to America to help out with a case regarding uh, one of his, um, I think he was a diplomat or somebody um, whose daughter got kidnapped from some Chinese men that they were chasing in Hong Kong. And so Jackie Chan gets asked to come to America to help out and find the daughter. Meanwhile, Chris Tucker um, is kind of like a failing detective and he's kind of like... Um, where like his own buddy, his own cop friends like make fun of him and basically no one takes him serious at work. So anyway, he thinks he's all badass. So and he's kind of clueless about like what's going on around him, too. So they ask him, the FBI asks him to help out by distracting um, Jackie Chan when he arrives so that the FBI and the real cops can do the business and try and help the do help find the kid. Meanwhile, the two cops are distracted and kind of out of the way. However, Jackie Chan insists on helping and Chris uh, Tucker wants to um, kind of go along with it. He wants to find the girl too, but he also wants to be all buddy-buddy with the FBI and wants to look good and kind of just, you know, stroke his own ego kind of. Uh, he's more about lots of selfish acts, whereas Jackie Chan is the selfless acts. So they kind of work really good as a duo, and we'll get to why that is later. But anyway, back to the plot. So they're chasing after a girl who's missing. Um, little shenanigans happen. They drive around they encounter um the old uh chinese bistro kind of restaurant where they think this uh leader john tao is they kind of sneak their way in then they have like a little scuffle then they're chasing after john tao and basically it all culminates at the end with a big um ex like an art exhibition i guess and um Basically, they kind of have like a shootout in the middle of the exhibition. Everybody leaves. It's basically just down to cops. People are getting shot. Then Jackie Chan chases the leader, John Tao, up to the scaffolding and they fight. Sorry, these are these will be spoilers, by the way. <laughs> if you haven't seen the film by now, shame on you. But anyway, um, I can't go into a review without possible spoilers. That's just the way it is. So anyway, um, so they chase him up to the scaffolding and then John Tao slips and falls and dies. And then Jackie Chan also falls and Chris Tucker saves him. And then everybody rescues the girl. You know, some of the art is saved. A lot of it was destroyed, <laughs> but, um, anyway, then they kind of get reunited and then they want to go take a trip to Hong Kong for vacation and they do some extra jokes and stuff like that. So that's the overall gist of the movie. Now, what did I take away from it? Well, uh, let me go into my scoring first. Now, if you're not familiar with my scoring, uh, it's just kind of a basic 1 to 10 or 0 to 10 um, scale, whereas a 5 is average. It's not bad. This isn't school. Uh, 5 is actually just average, uh, 10 being like the best it could be, a 1 or a 0 is just kind of like the worst. So, I broke it down into four categories. So we've got story, music, effects, and fighting, and then an overall score, which is what I'll give the movie. And again, these are my opinions. I don't care if you liked the film or hated the film, but I just like talking about it and figuring out like what people liked or didn't like and the reasons for it. Anyway, this is my review. So the story. So I give the story a seven, and I still think that's a little generous because the gist of the movie is pretty basic. I mean, a girl gets kidnapped in broad daylight, by the way, next to like a giant parade and stuff but anyway um so a girl gets kidnapped then the two cops have to track down the girl and the villain and it all culminates at the end with like a 
basic shootout and uh, um, uh, chase up into the scaffolding and then the fall. Now, this is where the fights kind of matter because when I was keeping track, I only really counted... I want to say three fights, but I think it was just two fights like that mainly happened. The first fight being in the Chinese restaurant where they infiltrate the Chinese restaurant. Um, Chris Tucker goes up to see Jun Tao first while Jackie Chan kind of like waits outside. Uh, Chris Tucker just gets his ass kicked and then Jackie Chan basically has to save him and then they have like a cool fight. That fight, I think, is actually the best one of the film. But again, that doesn't say much. Again, I'm going to be harsh. Sorry. Um... And the second fight is, I guess, at the end, where they're at the um, the Chinese art exhibition, and they basically have a shootout. There isn't really any fighting, and then the, um, I can't remember the guy's name, but it's the one second-in-command Chinese guy with, like, the bleached blonde hair. Um, they kind of have a little scuffle at the top, but it's really basic, and then Jackie Chan just chases up Jun Tao, the leader, up the scaffolding and then he falls like they don't even fight it's just a couple like shoot uh shots and stuff so i don't really count that as a fight but i'm going to so all in all there was only like two fights maybe in the whole film which is kind of why this is important as for it being an actual martial art film but i'm still going to review it as such so the story i give it a seven out of ten and I think it's at, that's a little generous. I think I would give it a 6, really. But I'm giving it a 7 because of a little bit of nostalgia. But I'm also going to be a little harsh. But the story was just generic. And none of the fights really meant much, in a way, if that makes sense. Uh, so anyway, the music. Now, the music I give a 7 out of 10. The music was good. Um, it wasn't awesome or bad or anything. So it's just kind of like above average. So I give it a 7. There were some classic tunes. Obviously, everybody knows from the trailer, the War, What Is It Good For song. Um, different, like, hip-hop things are kind of thrown in there. Some generic 90s action music is kind of thrown in there. Um, but nothing that was bad, and no but nothing that really stood out. Uh, the effects, I have to give the effects a 4 out of 10. There just wasn't really any effects. Yeah, Jackie Chan does his own stunts, and Chris Tucker is doing some stuff too. But... There wasn't really too many effects to be had. I mean, the biggest thing is probably just Jackie Chan falling from that huge height at the art exhibit at the end and some of the basic stunt work where he's like flicking chairs or rolling around couches and stuff. But to be honest, there wasn't even a whole lot of that compared to other Jackie Chan films. Um, so I give it a 4 out of 10. It was slightly below average. There really wasn't much going on in, in uh, for effect-wise. Now the fighting... I'm also going to be a little harsh and give it a 4 out of 10. It was below average. Again, there was only like two fights in this whole film. So I can't really talk too much about them if I didn't already. And there wasn't anything that really stood out. I mean, most people will probably remember the ending with the art exhibit and climbing up the scaffolding or the Chinese restaurant. But that's it. Like, I'm trying to look back and see if I missed anything. And I really don't. I mean... There was a warehouse part um, and a chase scene in the, um, like, with some ladders and scaffolding and stuff earlier. But, eh, I mean, that's not a fight or anything. That's just kind of like running around doing generic action cop stuff. So, I, sorry to say, but I have to give it a 4 out of 10. So, the overall score, and again, I think this is still kind of generous. I'm giving a 6 out of 10. Maybe a 5, but I'm going to give it a 6. And here's why. Rush Hour may be remembered fondly, but in regards to other films that came out before and after it, if you look back at the film, like really look back at it, it was just kind of like average. And Jackie Chan and Chris Tucker obviously do a good job, and when I get to Rush Hour 2 and 3, I'll explain more um, during those reviews. But they, I do believe that they're a good duo. Like, they're fine. But the story was just kind of generic. The fighting was non-existent. It was more of a... It, it wasn't even really a martial arts movie, to be honest. Um, it's more of just an action comedy film. So I do have to give it a 6 out of 10, I'm afraid. Um, not much else you can really do about that. Uh, sorry this review's gone on a little bit too long than I wanted to. Usually I try to keep these definitely around like 5 to 7 minutes or whatever. We're almost at 10 right now. But anyway, that's my thoughts on Rush Hour, and I guess I'll see you guys next time. Later.